Here's five reasons why you shouldn't join the military. But wait, Matt, why would you be making a video about why not to join the military? You're so like pro-military and stuff like that. Why would I do this? Well, personally, I believe that, first of all, not everybody should be in the military. I think it's something that only some people are kind of built for that they would actually enjoy. And then there's other people who think that they might enjoy the military and they just simply don't because it's just so different than anything else in the world. And I was thinking of, you know, five reasons or a couple of reasons why you shouldn't join the military and it was actually a pretty easy you know idea pretty easy topics and stuff to cover because there's plenty of reasons why somebody in particular general reasons why you shouldn't join the military but there's also a lot of good reasons why you should join but in this video i'm just covering why you shouldn't the first reason why you shouldn't join the military and it's a pretty obvious one and it is that you give up the younger years of your life the best years of your life you know whether it's from age 18 to 22 or maybe you join a little bit later and it's you know my case age 22 to 28 would have been the first time i could have got out if i would have done my first initial contract right so a lot of your early 20s maybe if you do 10 years or something like that but your early 20s are going to be some really good times in your life you're going to have the chance to go to college you're going to be doing that you're going to get different life experiences and stuff and if you join the military, it's just a straight up fact that you're going to miss out on some of those things that you could have done. You know, if you have your high school buddies and stuff, they're going to go off to college. You're going to go off and do the military. And then whenever you're done, you know, you may meet back up and you might realize that you have different life points of views and stuff like that. So that's something to consider. Now, I do want to say real quick that it's not the biggest deal in the world if you just do your first year uh, contract. Uh, your, your first four year contract and then you go to like college and stuff after that at age like 22 it's not going to be like a huge big thing but it kind of just depends on how much you weigh missing out on those initial years of your life you know after high school it kind of just depends on that but that is a really big thing you are going to give up a pretty good portion of your life to the military Reason number two of why you shouldn't join the military, and I've gotten this actually in a few of my comments on my videos. For some reason, people will go around and they'll post this in the comments and like, I guess, try to sway people from not joining the military. And it is that the military itself does not really care about you. You're just a number. And is that true? Well, yes, actually it is true. For uh, the big, the grand scheme of things, you are just a number and you can easily be replaced by somebody else. Like, it's not like, everybody in the military or like you're like i don't know this like jason Bourne character to where you're just like irreplaceable and like you're just like the best of the best in the military like what will we do without you it's not like that because the military be like what would we do without you we'll recruit somebody tomorrow or we got 10 people more lined up right after you so in the grand scheme of things the military doesn't really care that much about you they're going to pay you what you're supposed to be paying it doesn't matter really how much harder you work uh, you're still going to get paid the same amount of stuff. The real key here when you're trying to join the military is not to see, oh, let's see how much the military can care about me. It's kind of like for yourself, what can you get out of the military? What are you going to do in the military that you can take something out of it? Whether it's uh, experiences, friendships, people, money, different things like that, retirement fund, like what can you get out of the military, right? Because the military is going to get what they want out of you and they could really care less if you're this guy or this guy or this guy they're going to do what they're going to do but for you yourself you need to figure out what you want to get out of it but if you are of the mindset that you want to work for a corporation or some company or something that uh, from the highest level they really care about like the individual employee or the individual worker you're not going to get that out of the military you know you could be a private you could be a sergeant first class e8 and e9 or you know other officer levels and you know generals the higher ups in the military they don't really care about you that much on an individual basis like it's just you're another person but you don't want to get too caught up into that because how are they going to be on that personal basis there's you know millions of people in the united states military as a whole but i know that that can be a really big drawback for people whenever they're thinking about joining the military so i think i should include it here the 
third reason of why you shouldn't join the military is that rank is everything. And now this is a good thing for the military in the fact that it provides structural uh, structure and it gives you your chain of command and you got, you know, easy ways of communicating, you know, you know you're supposed to communicate with this person, right? But in the military, it doesn't really matter who you are as much versus what rank you're wearing, okay? So if I'm wearing a PFC rank on my chest, and somebody else is wearing a E5 uh, sergeant or staff sergeant or something like that, their rank on their chest, you know, who's going to win out in an argument? Who's going to get the final say? Even if they're completely wrong and they're wanting to do something that is just ridiculously stupid, maybe they're just doing things that are dumb, right? When you're a lower rank in the military, there isn't a whole lot that you can do. You just kind of have to grind through those lower enlisted years until you can make it to an NCO. You just kind of, whenever I'll be a second lieutenant, I'm, gonna, I'm going to have some say, a lot more say than somebody joining as an enlisted person, but I'm not gonna have as much as a company commander or battalion commander and stuff. And you kind of have to grind through those initial years of your enlistment contract to get to a place when you can really make decisions and actually start you know, influencing the, the company, the platoon, your squad and all that stuff. But if you're one of those people that has a hard time dealing with that, you know, you may be an older person, you may be joining the military at 30 years old, and you have somebody else who joined the military when they were 18, now they're, you know, 24, they're an E6, and you're joining as a PFC or an E4, they're going to be a higher rank than you. If you have trouble, you know, dealing with those kinds of situations where you maybe think because your age you're better than them, or maybe because your real life experiences in like the workforce or something. Uh, if you have a problem dealing with that and you can't fit into that structure that the military wants you to, which is that rank is everything. Rank is just like the final say so pretty much for a lot of cases on how decisions are gonna be made. Who's the higher rank? Okay, their decision is gonna be what we're gonna go with. Reason number four of why you shouldn't join the military is another thing that somebody has left on my comments or several people have left on the comments in my videos and that is that you lose a lot of your rights that you're going to have as a normal civilian whenever you join the military. And I do maybe possibly want to go into like really some in-depth, uh, an in-depth video on all of the freedoms that you will actually lose. But you know, for example, freedom of speech, certain things like that, when you join the military, you don't have freedom of speech. You're gonna lose some of the freedoms that you might have as a civilian when you join the military. So like if you're a civilian, you have a job, well you can kind of, you can quit that job whenever you want. You, you don't have to work at some career that you have or some job for some corporation if you don't like them. If you have a boss that sucks, you know, you can just quit. When you're in the military, you, you can't just quit like that. You, you can't do that. You are signed into a contract and you can't just quit. So that's one freedom that you're gonna use. If you have a terrible boss, you know, you can go through the chain of command, but if they're not doing anything unethical, immoral, or illegal, there's really not much you can do about it. So they're just gonna have to be a, a bad boss and you're gonna have to live with that for the remainder of your time that they will be in a position over you. So you're gonna lose some of these freedoms and that is definitely gonna be a negative, right? It's definitely gonna be a negative. And again, it kind of depends on how much you weigh that. So freedom of speech, you know, if you don't mind losing that, then that's perfectly fine. You know, you can still kind of say for the most part things you want, but you can't be pretty open with a disagreeing with the country, dis disagreeing with the president and the military and the things that we are doing in the military. You can't really talk about that uh, and, you know, oppose the points of view that the current military is doing if you are in the military. So that's something that you're going to lose. The final reason of why you shouldn't join the military is probably one of the biggest things that keeps people from joining the military. And that is you're gonna miss out on big events in life. You're gonna miss out on a lot of you know family events. You're gonna miss out on seeing your kids grow old. You're gonna miss out on these things. And that is completely true. And it is even true, it is true for reserves and guard forces, right? So if you're in the reserves of the guard, it's obviously not gonna be as drastic as active duty, right? It's not gonna be as drastic as that, but you're still gonna miss out on things. You know, on the weekend drills, there could be birthday events that you miss. You know, you could have your daughter's birthday or something, and if you can't get off of that drill, then you might have to miss that. You might miss, you know, weddings and like, you know, certain things like that. You kind of get what I'm saying here, but you're gonna miss out on things like that. And then in the reserves, you're going to deploy as well. So you're still gonna miss out 
on those things. So if you just had a kid, you know, last year, you you could possibly get deployed and you're going to be deployed for a year and you're going to miss that time of your child growing older. So that's a really big negative, right? It's just true. It doesn't really matter what branch you serve, whether it's an active duty or reserve branch, you're still going to miss out on some times with your family. Now, I will say that it's maybe not as drastic as people might think, you know, for active duty, a lot of people think, you know, if you go active duty, you're just never going to see your family. And that's not true unless you are just deployed. And even if you're deployed nowadays, for the most part, like you can Skype home and you can, you know, call home and communicate with your family over the internet, which is something awesome that we have now. And then whenever you're stateside and you're deployed or you're stationed, stateside you can have your family living there with you on post you're going to get to see them every single day so it's not going to be as drastic on that end that most people think but you're still going to miss out on times with your family with you know events and life events that are going to be going on so there you have it those are five reasons of why you shouldn't join the military and i think they're actually pretty good reasons pretty significant uh and again it all kind of just depends on how much you weigh a certain amount of those things it depends on you know what you actually want to get out of the military some of the things that you just want to accomplish in your life like how much does it matter to you that you actually just want to be in the military and be able to uh, do that, to give back to your country, to you know do something that is going to make you feel better as a person, that you've accomplished something in life, or you're a part of an awesome organization, right? It kind of just depends on how you weigh those things, but you know those five negatives are pretty uh, pretty big negatives, and you definitely need to consider them whenever you're thinking about joining. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you can hit that like button. If you wanna stick around for some more of my videos, you can hit that subscribe button. That would be even better. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, the comment section is down below. You can also hit me up on Instagram and Snapchat. Link is right there, or the username is right there. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys later. Drop.